Mr. Brady is recognized. Just a quick fact check on the blast from the past. Republicans did support Social Security and Medicare, and more recently, Republicans were the ones that reformed Medicare to add that important prescription drug benefit so we could have seniors lead healthier lives, stay out of hospitals, and enjoy their grandchildren more. What's become abundantly clear, the flaw is not the website. The flaw is the law itself. This is what happens. We inject 159 new federal agencies, bureaucracies, and commissions between you and your health care. And this was supposed to be the easy part. Just wait until see, you see the government making decisions about patient care, about reimbursements and treatments for, uh, that you receive from your local doctor and hospital. Ms. Tavener, I have a great deal of respect for you, and I suspect many Republicans do. Yet the White House, Secretary Sebelius, you and your staff made repeated claims to the American public and to Congress that everything would be ready on time. Everything was a go. None of that proved to be true. Now we're told everything will be okay very soon. So why should the American people believe you now? Congressman Brady, I would go back to what has worked in the last three and a half years since the Affordable Care Act was implemented. We have been able to make a difference in the lives of coverage of young people. We've been but able specifically to on the website in the exchanges. On Why the, should the American people believe you now? You've had nearly four years to get it ready. Now you're saying in four weeks more, it'll be great. So what's different? Why should anyone believe these claims? Because I think we've identified two major problems. One had to do with the initial volume. And despite our best volume projections, we underestimate the volume, the interest in the site. So but as you noted, the volume isn't the same as the applicants and the enrollment. That you yourself visited the site. Clearly, you weren't shopping for it. Others did as right. well. So to Chairman Camp's point, the number of applicants, the number of enrollees apparently still not right. known is pretty modest. Wouldn't you agree? Well, but I would tell you that the number of visitors to the site and the number of people interested in completing applications was larger than even our initial projections. And we worked our projections off of the seven million number that, Con that Chairman Camp mentioned. We also worked it off our history with Medicare Part D. So we've added capacity to the system and we've had improved system performance. So that's the first thing. The second thing is we have found some uh, what I will call functional or uh, glitches, as we call them in the public term, in the, in the actual application itself, which we're repairing. And that is the gradual improvements that you will see over the, the next four weeks, and that's why I'm confident about the end of November. Well, can I tell you, my, my constituents are frightened. Like millions of Americans, they are now being forced out of the health care plan that they like. Um, the clock is ticking on a website that's broken. Uh, their health care isn't a glitch they depend upon. So, you know, you've been described as a quarterback of the Obamacare rollout. I'm sure that's not the term you chose for yourself. But can you guarantee no American will experience a gap in their health care? So what I can guarantee is that we have a system that's working. We're going to improve the speed of that system. Excuse me. Yes. You're saying... The system right now is working? I'm saying it's working. It's just not working at the speed that we want and at the success rate that we want. And those are the things we're working on. We also have alternative methods for folks. They can use the call center. They can use paper applications. And then we have in-person assistance available in each state. So I can guarantee you that we can reach out to each individual and help them select a plan and enroll. So yes, sir. But to my point, this is not supposed to be fixed till November 1st. People have just two weeks to apply, enroll, be confirmed. So what happens on January 1st when, yeah. when they have an illness, they need patient care then, they've not heard back from the government, what do they do then? They actually will, they have until March 31st to enroll. No, but their plan has been canceled, as millions of Americans have found out. You're it ends You're talking December about 31st. people who... So, and again, I, I'm not trying, I'm just trying to 
no. what my constituents want to know, what happens? The individuals who've, plan who've received notices from their issuers is a different, is a different situation. They can certainly obviously sign up, transfer, as uh, we talked about earlier with Blue Cross of Florida, or they can go on the exchange or call the call center. No, but my point is it's been canceled. They don't have health care. They try to get on the website unsuccessfully. They don't know if they're enrolled. It's January 1st. They're facing a gap in coverage. What, and I'm, tell, what do you and tell I'm them? telling you, call the call center today and we will help them. They can go online and if they're not successful, we can help them through the call center. We also have people in their individual markets that can help them in person. So there are more methods than just the website. And I think that's important. I think what's become clear as well is Obamacare is not ready. The question is, why don't we make it voluntary? Why don't we give Americans a choice so they're not forced uh, into this health care that they don't want? Chairman, right. yield back. Mr. McDermott.